Once upon a time, a girl was forced into drudgery by her wicked stepmother, sleeping in the ashes of the fire until the only name she was known by was Cinderella. But the girl was kind and obedient and, most importantly, beautiful. So eventually she was rescued by a handsome prince. Once upon a time, a girl found herself the prisoner of a terrifying beast in a castle deep in the woods. But the girl was caring and understanding and, most importantly, beautiful. So eventually the beast fell in love with her and she fell in love with the beast, who turned out to be a handsome prince. Once upon a time, a girl was put under a spell and slept for a hundred years. She didn't have many important personality traits, because the most important thing about her was that she was asleep. Oh, and beautiful. So eventually, she was saved from sleep by a handsome prince. I love traditional fairy tales. They open up new worlds full of magic and possibilities, and they allow us to explore ideas. But they have a lot to answer for, not least the endless stream of beautiful girls and handsome princes, or the way they reinforce normative, traditional gender roles and values. What messages are we giving our young people through uncritical readings of fairy tales? And considering how well-loved these stories are, how deep are those messages sinking? Fairy tales that reward girls who are passive or obedient, like Snow White and Cinderella, reinforce the idea that girls shouldn't stand up for themselves and determine their own futures. Their beauty and kindness will make sure that someone else takes care of them. Fairy tales that reward men who are strong, brave or clever, with a princess to marry, reinforce the idea that women are prizes to be won. And there's another whole argument to be made about setting unrealistic expectations for men to be competitive or aggressive, to be someone else's hero or saviour, and not to feel fear or anxiety. By reading these stories more critically and retelling them, we can challenge the stereotypes they contain and encourage young people and especially young women, to see themselves as the heroes of their own stories. In addition to reinforcing rigid gender norms, fairy tales lack diversity in, the in their characters. The heroes and heroines of these traditional stories are usually either expressly or implicitly straight, white, young, able-bodied and conventionally beautiful. This can make it hard for people in our diverse, modern society to see themselves represented in the stories we know and love. It reinforces problematic ideas about who is valued in society, and it shapes who we expect to see as the heroes of our stories. Growing up, fairy tales were my favourite thing to read. I used to read them under the covers with a torch, because my lovely mum was not convinced that these often very grim and violent tales were appropriate reading for a seven-year-old. But perhaps what we should have been worrying about was the messages I was taking in from fairy tales. At the same time as I was enjoying stories about girls who rescued their brothers or dressed as men to have adventures, I was absorbing ideas like girls should be beautiful, sweet and good-natured, they should fall in love with a man, usually while they were still very young, who would, of course, be a charming prince and love them forever. As I grew up, I didn't grow out of fairy tales. But as an outspoken young girl who loved nothing more than adventure, I did get tired of the meek, obedient daughters and beautiful, silent princesses, so common in fairy tales. I moved on to novels, where the brave, diverse heroines weren't limited by outdated gender norms. Despite this, some of those early lessons from fairy tales were deeply ingrained. Struggling with crippling depression in my teens and early 20s, I remember a not-so-fleeting thought that I was a failure because I hadn't found my Prince Charming and didn't have beautiful, flawless hair. The unrealistic gender expectations I had picked up from fairy tales 
and the social pressures on girls that they mirror may not have caused my depression, but I have no doubt they contributed to it, and they were certainly there to kick me when I was down. The fairy tales I have retold and illustrated in my book, The Adventurous Princess and Other Feminist Fairy Tales, tie together my love of fairy tales with my love of stories where brave, diverse heroines determine their own futures, undertake any adventure, and achieve their dreams, which don't always focus on romantic love. I began retelling these stories because I wanted to read and share stories that had the charm of traditional fairy tales, but were more relatable for a modern girl or woman. I felt we deserved to see the diversity of our society represented in the stories we loved, to challenge stereotypes, and to encourage young people to see themselves as the heroes of their own stories. Some of my stories explore contemporary issues, like my Cinderella, who's an older woman dealing with elder abuse. And all of them offer an opportunity for heroines who are traditionally meek and mild to show their bold and adventurous side. My princess from The Princess and the Pea is an explorer. Did you ever wonder why she was knocking on a castle door in the middle of a rainy night? I always thought there was more to that story. She never even gets into the bed with all the many mattresses on top of the pea. She's much too busy convincing the prince to go off on adventures. Now, right now, you may be thinking something along the lines of, this is political correctness gone mad. Stop ruining my childhood. Or my favorite, when do you feminists stop? I'll give you a clue. We never stop. <laughs> I'm not suggesting we throw out the Grimm's fairy tales, which I love, or stop reading them to children. But we should acknowledge that they're not representative of our diverse society, or the expectations and aspirations we want our girls and boys to have for their lives. Retelling fairy tales is not actually that scary, because it's not a new phenomenon. For hundreds of years, people have been retelling fairy tales to suit their aims, fit their cultural norms, or appeal to their particular audience. In fact, over time, some fairy tales have been deliberately retold to be less empowering to women. Let's reverse this trend. When Gabrielle Cézanne de Villeneuve first wrote Beauty and the Beast in 1740, it was ahead of its time, in many ways a feminist critique of a restrictive marriage system in which women had few legal rights. Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont rewrote Beauty and the Beast a bare 16 years later, toning down the critique of forced marriages and emphasizing beauty's need to see the humanity within the beast, rather than the beast's need to regain his humanity through wrestling with his own beastly behavior. It's this latter version, de Beaumont's version, that is still best known today. Fairy tale retellings can take many forms, from short stories and satires, like Roald Dahl's Little Red Riding Hood, who keeps a pistol in her knickers, to novels, like Robin McKinley's Beauty, or films, like Disney's Tangled or Frozen. People have been retelling fairy tales since there were fairy tales to retell, and retelling these stories is still very much part of our culture today. So let's read more diversely and retell stories, because everyone can benefit from seeing themselves represented in the stories they love, from challenging ideas about who they are and what they can achieve with their lives, and from being inspired to dream. What if the girl who slept in the ashes decided enough was enough and took a stand against her abusive family? What if the girl in the castle decided it was not her responsibility to reform someone else's beastly behavior through her own emotional labor, and realized there are lots more fish in the sea. <laughs> what if the girl who slept for 100 years decided her first priority on waking up was to catch up on her life, not to marry a man she had never met who just kissed her without consent? <laughs> so let's read more diversely and retell fairy tales to challenge stereotypes and inspire young people, and especially young women, to see themselves as the strong, clever and adventurous heroes of their own stories.